Good morning, friend. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today is the day before Christmas, and we are celebrating Christmas at Josh's mom's house. And I've just got a couple little things that I want to get done today for that. No major big projects. I want to make some chapstick for some gifts. I want to, or I need to, make the breakfast casserole that I'm responsible for. And we're gonna make some homemade eggnog, get some presents packaged up, and it's just gonna be a relaxing day. So that was, how many did I just do? I think, first off, before we do anything, I'm going to get some coffee made so that we can function properly. So we're gonna get that going. It's early. And I'm just excited to spend the day in the kitchen with you. I just warmed up some sausage patties for breakfast. We did a little bit of breakfast prep the other day and we're benefiting from it today. It was actually yesterday, we did a bunch of breakfast freezer meals. And so I've got some sausage patties and some bread here. This is a carrot quick bread that is so good. I'm gonna slice some up. Breakfast is served. While I'm waiting for my coffee to finish brewing, I'm gonna go ahead and get some eggnog made. Eggnog is so incredibly easy to make at home. In this pot, I just added some milk and cream. I'm gonna add a little vanilla, and we're gonna make some eggnog so that we can put this in our coffee on Christmas. And then eggnog is one of those things you can sweeten as heavily or as light as you want. You could use maple syrup, honey. I'm just gonna use a little bit of cane sugar here. And then we've got vanilla in there. Now I'm gonna add some cinnamon. When I first started making eggnog, I thought it seemed super complicated and intimidating, but it's really very easy. Not everybody in my family likes it, but those who do really do, so I like to make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some fresh nutmeg. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna have to fish that out. We're gonna add some fresh nutmeg. Let's see if I can find that little nutmeg in there. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna wash that off. Won't go to waste. I'll let it dry out before I put it in the spice cabinet again. So let's get this on the stove. Turn the heat on low. I like to add a little bit more spices because I am gonna run this through a fine mesh sieve and so a lot of the spices will actually be taken out. So at this step, I usually add a little bit more spices that I want in the final eggnog. Now this is the part that makes it eggnog is we need egg yolks. So there is actually eggs in eggnog and I'm gonna save the egg whites and do something with those at some point. Egg whites freeze really well. So I'll freeze the egg whites and maybe next year I'll make a paplova or something like that, which I've been wanting to do. I just haven't got around to it. We need six egg yolks. Oh shoot, got a little ahead of myself. I was supposed to put the sugar in with the egg yolks. I'll have to still do that. That helps prevent them from scrambling. Two, four, five, and six. Okay, I'm not gonna put that much sugar, maybe a couple tablespoons. I don't like super sweet eggnog. And we'll mix that together. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start on the breakfast casserole. And I definitely can tell that I need my coffee because I feel like my brain is not fully functioning at this moment. So here is the egg whites. I'm gonna pop these in the freezer and use them probably coming up here pretty soon. And let's see, actually. I, I think I'm gonna take the temperature of my milk because it's almost, where did I put that candy thermometer I just bought? Here it is, up to temperature. Oh yeah, we're at 160, okay, perfect. So I'm gonna turn the heat down, and I'm gonna bring you over and show you how I'm gonna finish this eggnog. 
We need to temper the eggs so we don't scramble them. So I've got a spoon of hot milk. And we're gonna slowly bring up the temperature of these egg yolks. And basically, we're just pasteurizing the eggs. There are recipes where you make eggnog and the eggs are still raw, and that's just personal preference, however you wanna have your eggnog. So let me feel that. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I'm always really nervous about this step. Okay, there we go. And then we're gonna pour it in here. You just have to bring this up to 160 and that will pasteurize your eggs. And we're at 160. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off. This next step is optional, but I always like to do it just so that I make sure I have a nice texture on my eggnog. I can't find my canning funnel. So what I'm gonna do is strain this. The straining is the optional port. Ah, okay. Oh my goodness, okay. Let's do something different. This is what I'm gonna do. So just in case there's any egg scrambled bits, I like to strain it through this fine mesh sieve. And I just had this thought when I was making this that it would be really good, instead of using white sugar, brown sugar would be really good and you'd get that little extra molasses flavor. I've never made it with maple syrup and I think that would be really good too. So now I'm just gonna pour it into my mason jar which I'm gonna store in the fridge. This is another reason why I mentioned that I like to add a little bit more cinnamon and nutmeg because some of it does get filtered through. And I think the trick to eggnog is not to overcook it. So that's why as soon as it hits that 160, I call it done. And I know eggnog can be kind of one of those controversial things. You either love it or hate it. I have another mess here to clean up. And I think before I do anything else, because I wanna make chapstick today and I don't wanna mess that up, I think I need to take a minute Pour myself a cup of coffee, wake up a little bit, finish my breakfast, because I have not finished my breakfast yet, get a little protein. I'm gonna sit down and then we're gonna come back when I'm fully awake. Cheers. And that, my friend, is delicious. See you in a minute. I've had half my coffee now and my breakfast, so my brain is working just a little bit better. And I almost forgot tonight, I am not cooking dinner. I am going to have baked manicotti, a freezer meal that I had made with you all a little while ago. After we get our fun kitchen projects done in the morning, I'm gonna clean the kitchen and I'm gonna call it a day. So this is gonna be dinner. So I'm gonna set this out to thaw, just on the counter, cause it's completely frozen at this point. And then, in maybe a couple hours, I'll pop it in the refrigerator. And so now let's get going on the breakfast casserole. While I was finishing my coffee, I got the dishwasher unloaded. I still need to load it, but I thought I would just tackle this project because this is only gonna take a couple minutes to put together. So normally I'm responsible for cinnamon rolls. And after we did all those breakfast casseroles, if you saw, we made five Christmas make ahead breakfast casseroles. A few of my family members saw the croissant French toast casserole and they said they would rather have that than cinnamon rolls. And I am okay obliging them and making this because it comes together in minutes. It's so much easier than cinnamon rolls. And so I'm happy to do it. These are really yummy cinnamon rolls from Costco. I'm just gonna dice them up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is a nice recipe because we are, you know what, I think I'm gonna spray my pan. Obviously celebrating Christmas tomorrow and I can prep this today. And then tomorrow I don't even have to think, all I have to do is pop it in the oven. I think I'm just gonna take one of these pieces of croissant and 
spread that spray around a little bit. Now we don't do a lot of gifts, but I wanted to make these chapsticks and I thought that would be kind of a cute little simple gift that I could give my sister-in-laws and my mother-in-law if they turn out. So that's another reason why I wanted to get to this project today. I really wanted to get to making soap this year for gifts, but soap has to cure for four to six weeks and I did not get to it. So that's okay. I'll make soap, actually that goes in here. So clearly the coffee hasn't fully kicked in yet and that's okay. Cause we're just hanging out in the kitchen, enjoying spending time in the kitchen this morning. Very low pressure this morning. Now we're gonna make the custard for the casserole. We need nine eggs. So this recipe, we need to add nutmeg. Of course, if you don't like nutmeg, you could leave that out. Brown sugar, cinnamon, white sugar, milk, half and half. That wasn't quite a cup of that, so I'm just gonna put a little splash more of milk. And that is our custard. So that is how easy this comes together. So much easier than cinnamon rolls. Not that cinnamon rolls are hard, but this is just very, very easy. I think I'm gonna add a pinch of salt because I can't help myself because there is a little bit of sweetness in there with the sugar. So the salt will just help balance out that sweetness. We're gonna mix this together, pour this over our croissants, top it, let it sit. Tomorrow morning, I'll bake it at 350 for covered for about a half an hour, take the top off, bake it for another 10 minutes or so, and that is breakfast. My mother-in-law is making a savory breakfast casserole, so we'll have sweet and savory tomorrow for breakfast. Plus eggnog if people want eggnog for breakfast. And we'll probably do mimosas or something like that as well. And then this recipe, the original recipe, the way I made it when I made it with you all the first time is I topped it with pecans, but I don't think the majority of the family is going to prefer it that way. So I made the executive decision. Oh, I should just put this right in the dishwasher because I unloaded it to just go ahead and skip the nuts. And then I think more people will enjoy it that way. Pour this custard right on the top. Now we have dinner for tonight done, because it's thawing. Breakfast for tomorrow done. Eggnog done. Pop this in the fridge. So I think what I'm gonna do is get the kitchen tidied up and then we can get going on our chapstick experiment. I should probably have a couple more sips of this. My favorite chapstick of all times is Burt's Bees. And so when I was looking at recipes to make chapstick, because I've never made chapstick before, I looked up copycat recipes and I also looked at the ingredients listed in Burt's Bees. And the one recipe I found has all the same ingredients and so that is what we are going to attempt to replicate today. And if I can replicate it, you can actually make chapstick for pennies on the dollar once you have the ingredients, because it doesn't take very many ingredients to actually make a whole recipe. But I wanna go ahead and get my dishwasher loaded. I wanna be fully caffeinated before I attempt these chapsticks. I don't think we need any more eggs or anything. I'll link this recipe, the 
French toast recipe if you wanna try it. So incredibly delicious and so incredibly easy. I was waiting for my eggnog to cool down a little bit before I pop that in the fridge. All right, kitchen is reset now basically. So let me go grab the ingredients we need for the chapstick. All right, I've got all my ingredients, or at least I'm pretty sure I have all my ingredients out here. I was rereading my recipe and I was just thinking, the only part that I'm a little not sure about is how am I going to, after I make the lip balm, fill my tubes without making a mess? So we're gonna figure that out together. Maybe we'll just make a mess. So this recipe has either measurements with teaspoons and tablespoons, or it has weights. And since I have my scale that I really like here, we're gonna use this. And it is kind of hard with some of these ingredients to measure out with teaspoons and everything. So we do need a heat proof bowl. And we're gonna make this really easy by melting everything just in the microwave, but you could use a double boiler if you wanted to. So I will link this recipe down below if you're interested in it. The only thing I don't have on this tray is my essential oil. And what I really like about Burt's Bees is the peppermint in it. And Burt's Bees does have peppermint essential oil and rosemary essential oil. I did not buy rosemary essential oil just for this. I wanted to see if I even like the lip balm homemade in general first before I invested in the rosemary essential oil. Some of these ingredients to make this I already had. I think the only thing I had to buy for this, oh, was the lanolin and the tubes because some of these ingredients I need actually for making soap. I'll link all this equipment and the ingredients too down below if you're interested. But I saw that I could get cardboard chapstick tubes, which I thought was pretty cool. Well, this is a problem. Well, shoot. Okay, so I ordered these cardboard chapstick tubes because I thought that was cool that there was no plastic. But there's no way to, there's no way to push up. So once you use it all, shoot, I thought, Okay, I thought I had ordered other plastic tubes and then I saw these and I ordered these, so I'm gonna have to return these because these are pointless. Darn it. Okay, let me go check and see if I ordered other tubes. I'm bringing my laptop over here because I just looked at the description of the product I purchased and I bought these because they had good reviews. And they're called chapstick tubes. Oh, okay. Just this one doesn't work. Okay, friend, we're back in business. I was very disappointed there for a minute because right here it says push the bottom disc and that's how you can push the tube up. But the first one I bought or picked out, it, it must be glued shut because I cannot push that. But this one, I can push it up. So that's good, because if you couldn't actually push up the chapstick, then what would be the point of filling this tube? Let's see, yeah, that one. So I need to go through. And make sure that the ones that I'm going to use, okay, so that one pushes, that one pushes, maybe it's just that one that I happen to, that one pushes. Yeah, that's so funny. It's just the one that the first one I pulled out, it must be glued. But these are 100% cardboard, which I thought was kind of cool. And that one is glued. Okay, so we've got two, four, six, eight, which is more than enough. So now we can actually make our chapstick. I was about to be so incredibly disappointed if we weren't able to make chapstick today. Okay, so we've got eight tubes. So let's go ahead, these are a little bit bigger than your average tube of chapstick. I'm just gonna follow the recipe directly as written first and then we'll see how many tubes we fill and then we can tweak the recipe as 
we desire. I love the smell of beeswax. 20 grams. The next thing I'm gonna add is cocoa butter. Oh, I think I'm gonna zero that out and we're gonna add equal parts cocoa butter to beeswax. The more beeswax you put, the thicker your chapstick is gonna be. So this comes from the cocoa plant, so it smells a little bit like chocolate. That's 21 grams. Let's try that. 20 grams, perfect. Zero that out. I'm gonna do this next part really slow, and we're gonna add 45 grams of sunflower oil. Perfect, right on the money. One drop of lanolin. If you wanted this to be vegan, then you would just skip this part, but, well, I guess there's beeswax in it, so you would have to skip the beeswax too. So I'm not sure how you'd make it vegan. One drop of that. And then we need vitamin E oil. And we need eight drops of vitamin E oil. One, two, three, four. We're gonna call that eight drops right there, I think. This is not a tremendous amount. I think it's probably only gonna fill about one and a half tubes, which is good, because then if we wanna tweak the recipe at all, we can. So I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave. I'm gonna do just like I would if I was melting chocolate. About 30 seconds, stir it. 30 seconds, stir it. I wonder if I should cut that cocoa butter down a little bit. I think I'm going to. Probably should have done this before I put it in the bowl, but I'm just gonna break this up just a little bit so it melts a little bit faster. There we go, just like that. I just took this out of the microwave. There's still a little bit that hasn't dissolved, but it's pretty, pretty, yep, yeah, it's just dissolving. It's pretty warm to the touch, so I'm gonna let the residual heat just melt that. And now we're gonna add our essential oils. We're gonna add 14 drops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's probably about right. Mix that in. Now we wanna test this. So what it says to do to test this is to put a little bit, just a little bit on something. And oh my goodness, it's already hardening. But what I'm gonna do, it's actually almost completely hard. It is hard, actually. So I was gonna pop this in the freezer, but I think what I'm gonna do is actually, mm, try it out. I think it's a little bit on the oily side for me. The one thing I like about Burt's Bees is that it's not super oily. So I think I'm gonna add some more beeswax. And I wanna know how much I'm adding in case I ever wanna make this again. So I'm gonna put this on here, zero it out. And I think I'm gonna put 20 more grams. Cause I want it pretty beeswaxy. Cause I think that's why I like Burt's Bees so much. So there's 21, let's see if I can, 20. So I'm gonna make a note and then I'm gonna add some more peppermint. I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, about twice as much peppermint. Cause that's what I like about Burt's Bees as well is it's so pepperminty. And I've got my recipe here and I'm gonna put 20 plus 20. I'm gonna try to get this beeswax to melt with the residual heat. I need to pop this in the microwave again, I can. Yeah, it's hardening up, it's pretty thick now. So I'm gonna microwave this again. Kind of the cool thing about when you're making your own cosmetics is just like in cooking, you can control the ingredients. You could probably even use coconut oil instead of the sunflower oil if you prefer that or had that on hand. 
I do have that on hand. I probably could have used that. It needs to go in there for a minute longer. Pretty warm now, so I think the residual heat will melt the rest of that beeswax. Once I get all this beeswax melted, then we can do another test. But I need it all melted so that I can see if we've got a good consistency. So we're gonna do another test, just a little like that. And it hardens so quickly. This is our one I just did. So this was the first one and you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's super, super shiny and a little too greasy and oily for my preference. This is much, much thicker. Mm. I like that. Now I'm still a little congested and so to me, I feel like it needs more peppermint, but I'm gonna go have Josh take a sniff of this so that I don't overpower the peppermint and see if this seems like a good amount of peppermint. I can smell the cocoa butter, which is amazing, but I think it needs more peppermint. Okay, I'm gonna go have him smell it. I'm not crazy. Josh said it needs more peppermint, that he can smell more of the cocoa butter undertones. This stuff hardens very quickly. This first round is gonna be for me, and then I will start fresh once I have the recipe down for the gifts for people. Okay, let me smell that. I also have my favorite chapstick right here. Oh yeah, that has way more peppermint in it. So I'm gonna put a fourth dose of peppermint into my mixture. And in that amount of time, it's already thickened up a ton. So I need to go melt it. Okay, we're getting there. I think I'm gonna do a fifth squirt. Yep, I'm just going for it. Oh yeah, there we go. Now this is for me, that's why I'm okay sticking my nose into it, because this is just the recipe development phase. I'll make a brand new batch for the gifts. Okay, so I need to make a note that I did five, so this is 12 drops. I did 12 times five oil. I got my peppermint. My Burt's Bees. Oh yeah, that smells so good. I can actually smell the beeswax in this. I'm gonna go have Josh smell this now. Josh really likes it. So I gave him the Burt's Bees chapstick. I had him smell it. He put it on his lips and then I had him try what I just made and he really likes it. He said, no more peppermint, that it is good to go. But we were, both him and I were reading the ingredients on the Burt's Bees. And Burt's Bees uses coconut oil instead of the cocoa butter, I think. Let's see. So I guess that is something that's a little different than what I did here. But I only have coconut oil that smells like coconut. If I had the I think, it, is it the extra virgin that doesn't smell like coconut? I would maybe go ahead and use that. But I'm really happy with this recipe. And he liked the extra beeswax in it. He said the consistency is great. That's what I like about Burt's Bees, is I like the consistency that it is. So we're gonna melt this, get this into some tubes for me, and then I'm gonna make another recipe's worth for the gifts. Now one thing to note that I noticed, and I'm gonna use this tube for myself because I've been touching the outside, is if you have any of the chapstick on your hands, you're gonna leave marks on the cardboard which are noticeable. So that's something to note. I think what I should probably do is get some gloves on but then if I get chapstick on my gloves then and I touch the tubes, it's the same thing. Okay, that's, that's melted. All right, now the hard part, getting 
this chapstick into the tube without making a complete mess. That's where I think the plastic tubes would be a little bit nicer because if you get it on the outside of the tube, you could just clean it off versus this is gonna show every, you can see where I touched it, in perfection. And I don't wanna gift it with fingerprints on it. I'm so glad though that we were able to figure this. Yep, okay, so this one moves. So this is gonna be for me and Josh. I'm gonna go through my other tubes and find one where I touched. And this one will, because I think, yep, that one moves. I think I'll be able to fill two. So Josh and I's tubes. You know what? I might just have to use a, let's see if I can find it. Here it is. A funnel, because I don't know how else I'm going to get this in here. I'm a little nervous about this friend. Okay. So I'm going to have to stop every couple fills and see where we're at with that. Oh, almost to the top. Okay. Right at the top. Wow, okay. So one recipe that I make is gonna fill, I think, three of these tubes. Right there. Okay. So those I'm not gonna touch at all. You know, I was just thinking what probably would have been a great idea would be to put rice in a bowl and then you could, I'm nervous about touching these tubes because these are my nice tubes. Stick the chapstick tubes in rice so that they, well, no, I don't think I'd want to do that. Scratch all that. So let's go ahead and make a, another batch. I've got my perfectly pristine, no fingerprint cardboard tubes here. And I want to start all from scratch and I've got the recipe I like and we can just go from there. And just in that little bit of talking, you can see how it's already starting to solidify. And I did get a little bit on the outside of the cardboard too, but I think that's gonna be okay. Because we're making something that someone's gonna put on their lips, I just wanna make sure everything is nice and clean, just like if I was cooking. So hands are rewashed, and we're just gonna start directly from scratch here. So I'm gonna get a new bowl, another heat proof bowl. I just took this bowl out of the dishwasher, but I'm just going to make sure there's no dust or anything in it. So just take a clean paper towel and I'm gonna dust that out. And now we have our recipe. It's a little bit different than the written one that I found, but that's the beauty is we can kind of make things up. So what did I say? We are going to double this recipe. So we need 80 grams of beeswax. I'm so excited to share with you how we figured out how to make these tubes turn out perfect. It was a little bit of trial and error. I'm really glad that I did that first round first where I kind of messed around with the recipe and I messed around with the technique of filling the tubes because I do figure out a way to fill the tubes that results in a nice, clean, smooth top. And I do think that next time I do wanna tweak the recipe just a little bit. I was reading the ingredients on the tube of the Burt's Bees and it does have coconut oil in it. And so I think what I would do is substitute the sunflower oil for coconut oil and do the same ratio, but I would use the coconut oil that is not scented of coconut. So I do wanna try that, but we are able to make so much chapstick that I will not need to make chapstick anytime soon. And I do love the way that this recipe turned out. But that's the fun thing about when you're making homemade is you can continue to tweak the recipe and they turn out absolutely beautiful. The cardboard tubes work wonderfully. Once they are filled, they go up and down, no problem at all. I was going to melt this and I walked by these chapsticks and I noticed something interesting is that there's a little hole that formed when they were hardening. So I think before I go ahead and do anything with this, I'm gonna finish these ones so that I can fill that little hole and then I can wash out my funnel and everything and then we can be completely ready to make the ones for gifts. So I need to remelt this stuff. I'm sure there's some scientific reason why this is happening. This is the size this hole was. This, these two were a little bit smaller and I just popped them to make them a little bit bigger so we can make sure we fill them all the way. 
It's not going to take very much to fill these. So I'm preparing my tubes so that these will be ready as soon as I'm ready. Put the lids to the side. I've got brand new everything, brand new spoon, funnels cleaned out. We're gonna set this here and we're just waiting for our wax to completely melt. I think it's warm enough at this point now that the residual heat will melt this. So I'm gonna add one, two, three, four, five, six for good measure. Let's actually put some gloves on for heat protection. Yeah, I think I'll be able to hold that no problem now. I think I'm just gonna pour so I can see it's still pretty hot. How full, oh my goodness, okay, this is hot. You know what I think I'm gonna do because we had that weird thing happen, I'm gonna fill it not all the way full so that that little gap hole thing can form and then I'll come back and remelt this and then top it off. That seems to make sense to me. Oop, okay, so that one we filled to the top. My funnel is plugged. I'm gonna grab a clean chopstick and there we go. Woo! Okay. I'm so happy with how these ones are turning out for the gifts. I think the key is definitely filling them. I don't want to touch them. Partially letting that weird funnel whole thing happen and then we can top it off. So while I have to wait for these to cool, I'm gonna go run downstairs and do some shopping for finishing out the gift bags. I'm just looking through my really unorganized thing of tissue paper and gift bags and I've got some red and green. I saved my tissue paper. So we'll use some red and green. And then I went to Dollar Tree and I grabbed these just plain bags. So to make them Christmassy, we'll reuse this red and green tissue paper, because I think I'm out of white tissue paper. Let's see if I have any more. That should probably be enough. I think that's probably enough. So this is what we're gonna grab. And I think this year, everybody is going to get strawberry jam. And 2022. Yeah, everyone's gonna get, as well, maybe each person well, they're all gonna get a jam, I'm just trying to think. Maybe I'll do two strawberry jam bags and two peach jam bags, and then people can decide amongst themselves would they rather have peach or strawberry. So to make these jam jars look a little bit more festive, I have these cute little stickers, and so people know what they are. This is made with love, peach, Jam. We're gonna put this on here. I just got these on Amazon, these little stickers. And then whenever I gift anything in a jar, what I like to do is also give a ring for each one of these. So I gotta go grab three regular mouth and a wide mouth ring. I don't store my jars with rings on them because you're not supposed to do that according to the recommendations. So I don't do that, but not everybody in my life are canners. And so they don't have a bunch of rings hanging around. And so if I don't give them a ring, then they're not gonna be able to close the jar. So I'm just gonna go through my rings. You can see how messy the island is right now. And I'm looking for nice, pristine, pretty ones. And I'm just gonna lightly put that on there. I'm assuming they're gonna open these relatively quickly. So I don't mind having a ring on it to gift it but some of my rings are in better shape than others. And so I wanna make sure that I go through and I find nice looking ones. And I do, I really like that little sticker. I could link that down below if you're interested in that. They come in a huge 
roll. I've had these for years. Okay, so there's our jam. And our chapstick is starting to cool. I think what, while I'm still waiting for the chapstick to cool, I can open my bags. These ones didn't do that sink down as much as the other ones did, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and melt this now and we can top these off. I used my chopstick and I popped a hole in my funnel and we really don't have that much to put in here, so I'm gonna go very slow to top these off. funnels plugged. Yeah, okay. So we've got two, four that are absolutely perfect. These are the three that are for Josh and I, and I really like this chapstick. I'm gonna put the lids on and I got a little bit, I think I'm just gonna use the back of this knife. Let's see. Move that excess. So it did take a little trial and error figuring out how to make the top of this look really smooth. And we have one, two, three, four that are perfect. So we'll gift those tomorrow. But watch this. It goes up perfectly. So that's what I was worried about, that I wasn't gonna be able to push it up, but it works great. I'm gonna push that down because we don't need it up. So we've got three very large things of chapstick for my house, and then I'm gonna clean up. I'm letting those chapsticks completely cool. I definitely love the recipe that we came up with. I will link the original recipe, plus I will link what I did because this is a little bit different than the inspirational recipe, but I've got these ones where we filled it perfectly, the outside is perfect, and these are going to go directly into the gift bags. I hope that my sister and mother-in-law, sister-in-laws and mother-in-law love them. So I'm gonna just wrap each one in. Josh already took one to put into his car because he really likes it in each one of these bags. I don't think I'm gonna to have to be buying Burt's Bees anymore. Cause I'm gonna keep all the ones that <laughs> did not turn out perfectly. Well, I would say that is one productive day. I got the kitchen tidied back up. We've got our brunch for tomorrow, eggnog done, a handmade gift done. And I just got a text that we are going to have pizza tonight for dinner at my mother-in-law's. So I'm actually gonna pop this frozen, it's still pretty much frozen baked manicotti in the freezer. So I don't have to worry about dinner tonight. I don't have to worry about breakfast tomorrow. I am in Christmas mode. I'm gonna put a little bit more eggnog in my coffee and I'm gonna go enjoy this holiday season. So thank you friends so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we just kind of had a slow, relaxing day in the kitchen. And now I don't need to spend any time in the kitchen for the next few days because we are in Christmas mode and I'm excited just to settle in, relax, enjoy the season. I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season at this point, I'm sure it's long over but I am extremely grateful for you that you take time out of your day to spend time with me, that you invite me into your home. And there is just nothing more 
precious than time, and I don't take that for granted that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being new. I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.